Hi, Oliver Carlin here. How's it going? So would you like to go ahead and look over my shoulder and see how I utilize the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service, to accurately determine the value of my property within as little as 10 minutes without having to spend $400 on an appraisal? Well, stay tuned. So, so basically you're going to get to look over my shoulder here. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do when I, after I contact my real estate agent and I have them shoot me over the CMA and, and pretty much what that means is I tell the real estate agent, I say, hey, look, I need you to go ahead and send me all the active and sold, well, active pending and sold listings within one mile radius of my property within the last 90 days. That's what I tell him. He shoots me over something within a few minutes. It looks like a spreadsheet. And that's what I'm going to walk you through showing you how to take that data now and how to plug that into the property value estimator to pop out the value of your property. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and show you now how to how to basically take the MLS data that you're you asked for from your real estate agent, plug it into the spreadsheet, and then how to calculate it based on using the <clears throat> property value estimator. So when you get something from your MLS agent, it'll look something like this. Uh, this is just an image, but you'd actually get some data that looks like this. And you would just highlight all this data with your mouse up to this top row here. You want this data in the top row. So highlight it from here all the way down to the last row of your data. Now, if your data has multiple row, um, multiple sheets, make sure you ca um, copy all the sheets. And then we'll just paste them now over to our spreadsheet. So you took the data. And now we're, um, we're going to go ahead and look at it here in the spreadsheet. So here's a spreadsheet that I did recently on 22 Frank 9 Drive. And so here was the data. I already copied it in here. I think there was a couple rows. You also, sometimes you'll have the option in there to, you know, select like show 100 lines per sheet. That's typically easier. And just copy that. And then when you come in here, you'll just right click and then the paste and if it pastes funny like that then make sure you just there's another option here that'll say like match destination formatting and you'll want to go ahead and match this formatting and so anyway you should be at a point where it'll look like this and the reason why we do this it's not a hundred percent necessary but I like it because I'll come in here and you'll go up here and you'll hit filter and now you have all these filter options at the top now what I'm interested in filtering out is the square footage because I'm only interested in you know the the properties that are within 10% plus or minus of my subject property square feet. Now in this example my subject property square feet was about 1800. So what you could do is you could go in here and just manually unselect the ones that are plus or minus now, if you, you wanted to find out plus or minus, it would just be equal. So it'd be 1800 times 0.90, right? So that would tell you 1620 would be the lowest I could go. And then if you took this cell, you minus it by 1800. So that would tell you pretty much that 180 square feet plus or minus from my 1800 so if that was the high then you know this one would be 1800 plus 180 so my high would be 1980 and my low would be 1620 now you could go in here and you can do a, a number filter and just do a custom filter and now one other thing I want to say if you if the data you copied over happens to say square feet you'll have to delete the text in here before i know every mls is different but you would have to delete that first just to get these number values and then just go in here and say is greater than um 1620 and 
is less than uh, 1980. And those would be the only ones that I'd be interested in. So as you can see, it would narrow your, your results way down. And then one other thing I would come in here and do is I look at the baths. These are full baths and half baths. So if you look at the bedrooms, I know mine was three bedrooms, two baths. So these are all pretty much within, you can go one up, one down for the beds and the baths and stuff like that. Now the square footage is set. So pretty much these are our subject properties that we're interested in looking at, you know, based on the data that we got um, from our house and then the MLS data. Now I take notes, like you can see here, I take notes when I go down, I can see, oh, this one was a rehab. That's why it was priced the way it was, lower than all these other ones, right? And I, and I like to sort these too by um, smallest to largest, because I like to see what going from lowest to highest, why you know they're going that way. So all you would technically do here is, if you had your MLS up, you would just go into your MLS, you'd open the map view, the map view on your MLS. There's typically a map view. Every MLS is different, but just go in there, find where it says map view, and then go ahead and look at, you know, this, these different properties, you know, based on where they're at on the map. And you would be able to see how close they are to your property because that's important. And because you want to start with the closest out, right? And hopefully, you know, get your MLS, talk to your agent, see if, how you can get that option working if you, if you can't figure it out on your own. And they'll definitely work with you and show you how to use the different MLS software. But there should be a function in there that has a map view, almost like the way Zillow does it, a map view. And then you'll have little dots on the map, you know, with um, showing you where the properties are based on, you know, where your property is. And so go ahead and start from the lowest out, the closest out from these properties to your property and kind of just find the top four of these properties. And I'm gonna pause this for a second. I'm gonna open up my spreadsheet. Okay, as you can see, I've got my property value estimator open and then I also have the spreadsheet open here with all our data. So pretty much all you would do is you'd come in here, you put in 1800 for our square footage, and then you'd come down to the first comp. Now, if the, based on these comps, you know, you'd pick the ones you're gonna choose, but for this example, we're just gonna pick a couple of them and plug them in to figure out, you know, which ones we're gonna use. So we would probably use this 221. So you would just take the price from here and plug it in here. Now these, Oh, one other thing I forgot to say was um, these were new listings and sold listings. So I, yeah, here you go. These were the actives and the sold. So I had actives and solds together. So keep in mind, you're gonna have to separate them out to your actives and your solds. So if I'm just looking at my solds and I'm saying, okay, so I'm taking a 221, I'm looking at my sold comparables. I just copy that data, come in here and I paste it in. Make sure you delete the dollar sign in there. And then you're gonna put the square footage for this property, which the square footage is 1644. Now I, I think, yeah, the, we already did that. So, so there's our 1644. And you're gonna to wanna to do this for all, for four properties. So no sense in you watching me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and I'll populate this and show you what the results look like. Okay, so I just inputted all the active comps here and you can see it comes out to the average square footage and the estimated retail price based on sold homes. So they're telling me right now that 235 based on sold homes is the estimated retail value. But we're also gonna plug in active comps and we'll do the same exact thing in there except as you can see before, from the last time, I'm gonna go ahead and just look at the actives now. And then I'm gonna take four of those and I'll be back in a second. Okay, as you can see, I have a popular list. And one thing I just noticed was all these say first comps and up here they said first. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. When you actually get into the software, it'll actually be first, second, third, and fourth, first, second, third, and fourth. But 
All right, and anyway, so as you can see, I filled these in now. Down here it says square footage, 137, and then it has this other line, price discount of active comps. Now the reason we do a price discount of the active comps is because people typically price higher than what they end up selling it for. So we, we went ahead and subtracted 3% from what they're actually asking for the property because that's more likely what they're actually gonna sell it for. And that brings us to an estimated retail value of 239, which you can see these were actually pretty close to each other. And probably they're priced a little higher because people typically price their homes a little bit higher on average. Now, down here at the bottom is the summary. You'll have estimated retail value, 235, same thing you just seen. Now, the minimum retail is just gonna take the lowest one of the two, and then negotiation cushion is 3%. We, I wanna go ahead and add 7% to this. Now, you don't have to, but uh, a nice little negotiation cushion, if this is what your property is worth, I took the minimum of the two. The reason I take the minimum of the two is because that's more realistically probably what your property is really worth and actually going to sell for, unless the market's on the way up in your area. But I just err on the side of caution and take the lower of the two. Now, the cushion is just 3%. I added to the lower of the two, and that brings me up to 242, 416 is what you would probably list this house for right now. So that's pretty much how the software works and that's how you would use the MLS. Now, one thing I did want to say, I know I didn't have, I didn't have access to my MLS right now because um, my agent, all the links he had sent me had already expired <laughs> from the last one that I had sent. So I didn't have one making this video, but I'll, I'll shoot another video later on actually using MLS. But for now, I just wanted to show you guys how this actually works and now, if you did want to see how I actually look at the, the um, well, let me, let me go ahead and show you real quick. I want to show you one more thing on how I would actually look at a property with the images and description. So let me pause this and we'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. So what I did here is I just wanted to pull up a property. Now, if you're on MLS, the, the link they sent you from MLS, you're going to get something similar to this. Okay, you're going to have pictures, you're going to have descriptions, you're going to have data. So one one of the things that you should particularly be looking for is what what type of property is this property? You can see this is a single family home. And in here you can see a residential type is attached, right? So attached is telling me that this is a townhouse. So is my house a townhouse? Because if my house isn't a townhouse, then these comps aren't going to be accurate, right? And another thing I look at is I read the descriptions here and I see, you know, is this a fixer upper? Was this a fixer upper or was this house ready to be sold as is? So kind of look at the descriptions, get an idea, look at the features down here and see you know, how many garages does it have, you know, you know, just get an idea of if this looks similar to yours and then come up here and look at the pictures of the property and you can go ahead and kind of see, okay, here's a nice bathtub, the type of countertops that they have in the, in the, the restroom. Okay. You can see that the kitchen here, um, you can see nice stainless steel appliances. You can't really tell the countertop from this picture. It looks like it could be granite or marble. Also could be Formica. It's really hard to tell. If you go through the description, sometimes they'll say what that stuff is. And you know, just kind of flip through these pictures and see see if you know the house resembles you know what your house would look like. Now this one didn't have any pictures of a yard, so it's maybe it doesn't have a yard. It's a townhouse, so it probably doesn't. But that's something else. Does yours have a yard? You know, these are just things you have to think about and say, okay, is this a, this is a really good comp or well, you know, this one's probably not the best comp to go off of near my property. So those are the things to look at when you're looking at the, the, uh, the four to pick to plug in for your active and your solds. All right. Well, that concludes this video training on how to use the MLS to fill in the data for the property value estimator. If you do have any questions, you know, just comment below and I'll, I'll be responding to those and, and answering any questions that you guys have that pop up. All right. If you, if you found this valuable and everything else, you know, like it and share it on Facebook. 
All right, well, take care, and I hope you the best on finding the best value for your house. All right, bye.